chess friends, this is uh, Sir Glenn for our for Olonga Pasiri Chess Club and this is the uh, second installation or part two of my uh, um, opening uh, study and Queen's Gambit accepted. So, so here is the initial position of Queen's Gambit accepted. Black plays Queen, I mean Pawn, takes C4. And we have discussed uh, the lines after E4 on the first part. If you would like to see it, please uh, watch my first video. So the lines going to E3 will simply transpose to the uh, main line, which I will discuss now, as well as Knight to F3. So here, let's try to discuss the main line, which is Knight to F3. Our next move is A6. We now threaten to support or defend the pawn on c4, keeping us a pawn ahead. So let's first discuss here what if white tries to prevent it with a4. So here we simply plan to lay out our pieces on um, knight f6, e6, and followed by the c5 advance. So let's see how it is executed. Knight f6, e3, e6. Bishop takes c4, and then the uh, frame break c5. Now here, white can either play knight to c3 or a castle, but it would transpose into each other, so it's um, it makes no difference. So let's say, for instance, he plays knight to c3 first. We'll just continue with knight c6, or pawn takes. It's also possible. It will simply transpose to our line so it doesn't matter knight to c6 castle pawn takes d4 pawn takes d4 again as was discussed on the first chapter knight takes d4 uh, is not really uh, uh, good because after knight takes and pawn takes d4 it may lead to the same position and we will simply comfortably develop our bishops on e7 followed by uh, let's say bishop b7 it will simply transpose to the line that we're discussing most probably more often than not i should say and then followed by uh, actually here not b6 because of the d5 advance so we'll simply play perhaps bishop d7 here followed by bishop to c6 okay so followed by bishop d6 where it says rook c1 and then we play first bishop c6 okay so that's the ideal plan now you might ask why not b6 after bishop g5 you should know the difference here because after b6 why can take advantage of it by playing the very quick d5 and after black let's say captures it using a pawn um, I believe white can enter complications here starting with rook takes e7 queen takes e7 and knight takes d5 now black cannot cannot capture the knight because there's a pin and after a possible, let's say, queen d6, it will lose to knight takes f6 check, giving up the queen. So black has to play queen c5. And after wards, uh, I believe white has a very pleasant position. Uh, just in case, with let's say, for instance, Knight takes f6, check, pawn takes, and after let's say bishop f6, actually here um, the complications might favor uh, white, but I'm not sure because here uh, attack seems not working out well after queen takes c4 but let's see for instance here after queen c5 i'm sorry after queen c5 maybe rook c1 first 
would lead to uh, may lead to White's advantage, although it's quite com it's still quite complicated. Um, it's very dangerous for uh, for uh, White to give initiative here, and let's say Knight takes D5. Will simply, I think, fail, fail to Bishop takes D5 because there's an attack on the rook. So this is really bad for black. Okay, so let's go back to the line where pawn captures on d4, bishop e7, bishop g5, castle, rook e1. And this goes to our tabia or to our main position, main analysis, where we intend to play knight to d5. Okay which will lead to mass exchanges and uh, an equal endgame. So here, so it doesn't matter whether white castles first or knight c3 first. Let's, like, let's try to go with the uh, same line castle. Okay, so you try to reach this uh, position, main position. Now here the free move is what is knight to d5. That's what we've been discussing. Now let's analyze is each exchange carefully here one alternative is to analyze first the capture on d5 which let's say for instance knight takes d5 which will uh, of course obviously fail to bishop takes g5 and let's say for instance um, knight captures back on g5 we simply play pawn takes d5 attacking the bishop and still the queen attacks the knight on g5 so I think uh, this is a very uh, important uh, new ones here will simply be defended so as you see if just in case white attempts to uh, defend the knight by playing queen to h5 attacking the mate so we cannot capture here because of the mate on h7 so instead of that Instead of capturing the bishop, we simply play bishop to f5, defending our h7 weakness, at the same time trying to capture the bishop on c4. So he will simply drop down, perhaps to uh, a2. And afterwards, we could simply um, secure our king side by playing bishop to g6. And I think this will lead to an equal and game after let's say h6 and an eventual exchange of queens so I don't believe that uh, white has anything here and what can practically play anything here even uh, bishop e4 I think it's playable as a as f3 <coughs> is simply met by bishop h7 because after it takes here it can capture on d4 okay so let's go back the pawn takes and let's say for instance the bishop retreats here simply queen queen takes knight and I believe white loses a piece so queen h5 is forced uh, enough for uh, knight takes d5 let's discuss bishop takes d5 bishop takes d5 uh, may also lead the sa to the same thing after uh, bishop g5 well e takes d5 is safe enough for me looks like safe for me since the bishop is defended twice by the queen and the knight and simple bishop takes would go to knight takes e7 but let's say for instance let's look at bishop takes g5 bishop takes g5 i think uh would be uh, quite good for black takes here simply takes the bishop still defended so i had two bishops versus two knights and 
Knight takes bishop, queen takes knight. Even though my have a weak pawn on c6, white also has a weak pawn on d4. And my bishop can easily find um, an active diagonal either to bishop b7 or by playing a5 and then bishop a6. The main uh, discussion starts after white plays bishop takes e7. We capture with the knight on c6. And here, white has a lot of uh, lines here. Um, the main being queen b3. But let's try to analyze other uh, lines. Let's say, for instance, uh, white prefers to capture on d5 with a knight. Here, I plan to capture using my other knight. So I can put my bishop on to b7 by means of b6 and bishop b7. So let's say, for instance, here, queen d6. Let us try to secure our queen first. And let's say rook c1. Uh, we can simply uh, reposition our bishop on b7. And I don't see that uh, black has any problems at all after bishop b7. Let's say, for instance, queen d2, bishop b7 is uh, pleasant for black. Uh, bishop takes d5 is not a good move because it gives up a very strong bishop uh, which is supposed to be repositioned in d3 and after knight takes white has nothing at all so let's skip that let's try bishop to d3 bishop to d3 uh, is also good since it threatens to have a great gift sacrifice on h7. Please familiarize you with uh, with this, folks, because if you're not familiar, uh, you might get mated. So let's say, for instance, black plays pawn to b6, and uh, white is given the opportunity to do this trick. Sometimes this works, sometimes it does not. But you have to take note when, uh, what are the situation where it works. So this is an example where it doesn't work because after in h5, white will simply play knight to f6, defending the h6 weakness, and black has won a piece. So let's say, for instance, instead of capturing on b6, let's say I'll try to do this first, and black will simply play knight takes, and he cannot sacrifice on a7 because after bishop takes, king takes, knight g5, I will simply capture the knight on g5. So let's say for instance, white tries to uh, play h4, so he can play the sacrifice. Uh, black will, you know, simply play bishop b7, allow that sacrifice because it doesn't work. Bishop takes, knight takes, knight, queen f5, and after queen h5, it will simply fail to knight f6 again. Black has won a piece. Okay, so let me try to go back. Okay, so bishop d3 does not lead to, I believe, any advantage for white. Rook c1, bishop b7, and uh, black is, or white is still. Uh, you know, trying to find ways in order to gain an advantage, but I believe black can hold because of his uh, thesis. Okay, so black has achieved his aim of, you know, controlling the d5 square and making the isolated pawn on d4 as weak as possible. Black will welcome exchanges, and the ensuing end game uh, will ensure black of equality, placing the rooks on eventually on c8 and d8 will should give him more than enough equality so let's say for instance let's play some moves rook c8 queen d2 queen d6 let's let's say for instance um, knight to e4 
and black will simply exchange queen on f4 and black is a very pleasant game okay now since i discussed that line let's try to go back to the uh, main line which is queen to b3 queen to b3 puts as much pressure on d5 as possible we'll simply ignore that and play b6 <laughs> and let's try to analyze what happens if white captures on d5 so let's say knight takes knight takes bishop takes we'll simply play pawn takes sometimes you can venture to a gambit by playing queen takes d5 and after queen takes pawn on b6, bishop b7. Notice that even though white is up a pawn, the bishop on b7 is very strong, coupled by the weakness on the isolated pawn in d4 shouldn't be much of any uh, problem to black. Let's say for instance white plays knight e5, be careful because of queen takes g7, g2 mate. And if white tries to go aggressive by playing rook e5, queen d7 threatens bishop takes f3 followed by queen d4. Let's say, for instance, he plays this. Black will play here, here, and here. Very easy equality. So instead of that, let's say, for instance, white plays rook to d1. He will simply recover the pawn by playing queen takes a4. Okay, so that's just an example. You're not required to sacrifice your pawn because pawn takes bishop will lead to very easy equality to 95. Now we develop our bishop to a stronger square, which is the e6 because it blocks the e file uh, to avoid penetration of white's rook on the e file along the e file, and this should lead to a very easy. Uh, equal game for him. Let's say for instance white tries to um, develop quickly and use his temporary initiative or lead in development. We'll simply ignore that. We'll play rook to e8 continuing to solidify our or meet equalize the rook the white's rook on e file. Okay take note that if your opponent's pieces especially the rooks are controlling important squares, files, rank or diagonals it is but normal for you to control it as well with uh, the same piece of the same power or the piece that has the same ability so you would be able to neutralize this lines that may even develop into an attack later so after rook to e8 knight c6 queen to c7 notice that the queen is safe even though you're putting your queen uh, against white's rook there is no discovery that you know strong enough for for white to be proud of let's say for instance knight e7 check fails to simply queen takes knight which wins a piece and if white chooses to go back to uh, let's say to um, e5 we'll simply play queen b7 and putting another rook on c8 which equalizes real quick and if white tries to be tricky, play knight a5, simply play queen b8 or queen a7, knight c6, we just repeat position. Okay? However, if white plays a5, we simply play b5. And even though we have four pawns and light squares, the knight has no clear outpost that he can be proud of. Maybe he can maneuver to c5, but I don't think it would give him much as well since uh after placing there i don't see anywhere that you know can be can lead to his advantage let's say for instance let's play this knight to c5 i'll just simply exchange a pair of rooks and then oppose it again with rook c8 and let's say white will play knight c5 black will simply play queen c6 or simply get out of the way even Perhaps even uh, queen queen e7 works because knight takes a6 does not work because of rook takes rook checkmate. 
so I think uh, you know white can uh, hold the balance here let's say for instance rook e1 queen d6, queen d6 and still black is very solid I don't see any way for for um, white to continue 